everyone. I hope you guys are having a blessed day today. I know I am. Um, I just want to do this video. This is kind of, um, I just watched a video from Nicholas Getty uh, today that was pretty shocking, you know. Wow. And just it just it just got me to start thinking, you know, how easy people can literally be moved away from the gospel without even knowing it, all because people are operating in offense. You know, people can deny all they want to, but when you operate in offense, you are gonna be in the flesh all the freaking time. And everything that comes out of your mouth is gonna come out from the flesh perspective, not from the understanding of the Holy Spirit. You can talk Holy Spirit all you want to, but your flesh is very evident that when you speak, you speak, you know, from the flesh. And that's the sad part, you know, because at this point we should be growing and, you know, admonishing one another, encouraging one another, lifting one another up, you know. That's really where our focus should really be, you know. Nobody got time for foolishness. Nobody really does, you know. But with that being said, I'm going to give you the gospel and then we can just do this quick video. Hopefully it stays quick this time. <laughs> I, I know I always say the same thing. Gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, and that's that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and the third rose from the death for justification. Jesus always existed. He is the second person of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Jesus left heaven, was born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, never sinned, and shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all our sins. All what God commands is that we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, put a simple childlike faith and, and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ and trust that when he shed his blood on the cross, he shed it for us, okay? And when we believe in the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are trusting God's testimony concerning his son and in return, we are forgiven. We will be forgiven of all our sins, past, present, and future. We will be reconciled back to God, okay? Be made co-heirs of Christ, sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, okay? Until the day of redemption, and the fullness of the Godhead will come and abide in us forever. God makes his abode in us forever. So every born-again believer has the Holy Spirit, the fullness of the Godhead, abide in, in them. Every born-again believer, okay? With that being established, now, in the video that Nicholas Getty posted, I was shocked that someone can say, um, someone speak concerning false gospels. The problem with, that I find right away is, you can't talk about false gospel and then you're presenting the, the exact same thing, you know, without even thinking. Again, that's what happens when people are in the flesh. You don't think from the spiritual mindset because the flesh will make it evidence and embarrass you. That's just what happens, you know. So in this video, this, 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 this individual, you know, you know, I don't like to bring people's name in anything. This individual talks about false gospel, but then says that those who teach that you don't have to do anything, okay, once you're saved, you know, that you don't have to do anything, you know, or pretty much, you know, that it is blasphemy, you know, you know, you know, you know against the Holy, Holy Ghost, that, that it's like an utter blasphemy. I mean, what? <laughs> okay. So, in other words, you have to show proof that you're saved because that's, that's other, I mean, that's just understanding from that. You can't go around that. You can't say, well, no one has to show proof. But then you say, someone has to do something. If you're saying that someone has to do something, or if they're telling people that they have to do something after they get saved, you know, if they just want to just enjoy Christ, to grow in the knowledge of him, to build one another up, no, that's not enough. They have to do something, you know what I mean, for rewards, okay? Then that is an anti-gospel because... To an unbeliever, you don't present the gospel and say, oh, this is the dead burial registration of Jesus Christ. By the way, once you're saved, you must also, you know, be ready to do good works because, you know, good works must follow. Because if not, then, 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 then that's blasphemy. I mean, you can't tell an unbeliever that. I mean, do you see the problem with this video? Go see it for yourself, guys. It's freaking utter nonsense, you know. But that's what happens when people are in the flesh, you know. But... It just got me to start thinking, like, wow, look at this. This is foolishness. It really is, man. We need to really stand. This is why the gospel, if you know the gospel and understand the gospel, anytime someone brings anything contrary to the gospel, they expose themselves right away. Remember what I told you guys on my post. 
you know, uh, my community post to guard your crowns because the enemy have been have infiltrated and he's using so many people to try to rob you of your crown so that you cannot enjoy Christ. You cannot enjoy everything about him. You know, you see, we are, ex you know, we are, uh, 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 you know, um, admonished, you know, to walk, you know, in the same manner that we receive them by faith. You know, we go from faith to faith as a believer. Everything that has to do with a Christian is faith based, not work based. Now, there are works that will be done, but none of us know what they are. Do you know why? Because God does not give each one of you a program and say, now that you save, this is the works you will do. Or God will give you a dream and say, this is it. Okay, in this dream, I see you doing this work or that work or that work. You don't get to cherry pick what you want and then say, oh, this is God doing this through me. No, because none of us know that. None of us was given that information. Why? I'll tell you why. It's all in scripture. We're going to read that right now. But first, let's, be, let's start from the beginning in Philippians chapter 2, okay? After this, we're going to go to Ephesians 2, 8, 10, okay? All right. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. See, we're not to tear each other down, we're to lift others up. Okay, but people who like to make all this accusation forget that part, you know, because they operate in the flesh. So they, everything they do is to tear you down, uh, to, uh, to bring accusation nonstop, not esteem. Okay, the opposite of that. Now look what it says. Look, look what it says. <laughs> look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. So don't stop examining other people, you know. Stop examining other people, you know. You just mind your own doggone business, you know. And there's a reason why, you know. Because you don't get to decide what a Christian should look like. No, God knows each person and what works that needs to be done in each person's life, and he's one in charge of that. You don't know nothing. None of us do. None of us do. I cannot tell you what works God wants me to do. Because if I see him tell you this is what God wants me to do, I'm lying. Because I don't know. He does it through you, and it happens automatically. You just do it when the time comes. Because he already preordained for that to happen that way. And, I, I, and, and I'm going to prove it to you. But let's get ready. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant that was made in the likeness of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also had highly exalted him, and giving him a name which is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now peep this. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Here, here's, here's the kicker. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Ooh, people use this one to bring fear and condemnation to other people. Let's read verse 13, what it says, though. For it is God which worketh in you, but to will and to do of his good pleasure. So who's the one working out your salvation with fear and, and trembling? Who causes you to do that? Is it you or God? So it is God's doing through you. You have no control over that. It is something that's already preordained to happen. You can't get away from that. That is part of God working in each one of us. You don't get to control and tell him what he needs to fix and what he doesn't need to fix. He automatically knows what he's going to fix in each one of us. We all got issues, don't we? We all got different problems, and he knows exactly, okay, this, 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 okay, Preordained for this person. I know they're going to get saved here at this point in their life. This is going to happen. And then at this point, this is going to happen next. 
God knows each step for each one of us. Not a single soul on earth knows anything that they can do for themselves for God to be happy. You don't. What you think you do know, you know absolutely nothing and it's all works of the flesh. All works of the flesh. That's that self-righteousness, you know. We must escape from self-righteousness and learn to trust God, that God knows what he's doing in each one of us. Instead of examining other people, just trying to find out, you know and I'm saying, well, if they say this, no. How do you do that? You rest in him. Let him work through you. That's what you do. Now, go with me to Ephesians 2 at 10, because I'm going to drive this point home, because this is crazy. Look at this. You know, we always quote Ephesians 2 at 9, but let's look at Ephesians 2 at 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. First of all, he already established a foundation right there. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. So that's something that's already done. It's created already in Christ Jesus. Okay, You don't know what that looks like, neither do I. But look what it says. Unto good works. Do you know what those good works look like? No, you don't. But God does. Why? Which God had before ordained means it's something that's set in stone for you to work in. You don't know what they'll look like, but God does. And he knows when you will walk in them when the time comes. It is something that cannot be missed. Remember the scripture where, you hear, where we hear, he who began a good work in you will see it to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Why would the Bible tell you that if the work is your work? That is not your work. It is his work being done through you. You don't know what that looks like, but he will see it to completion because it's already preordained to be done at a certain time and a certain phase of a Christian work. You don't know what that looks like. This is why you cannot go examining people and pointing fingers and laying accusation. That is oxymoron because now you are placing salvation and understanding of what God wants into your own hands and not by faith and trusting in Christ alone and in, in, in his finished work. So in other words, you want to talk about grieving the Holy Spirit? That's exactly what that person is doing, grieving the Holy Spirit by sitting here. Everyone who is teaching that you must produce works and da 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 they are grieving the Holy Spirit because you can't do the job of God. You don't know what that looks like. Just because you say, well, I'm out here preaching. So, so what? So what? Whether it is you or someone else, the gospel will be preached with or without you. And if God ordained that you will preach the gospel at some point, guess what? That gospel will, will be preached. But it's not something you walk around and be like, guess what? I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm going to do this. I, 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 I. There's no I here. There's no I here. It's all Christ. That's the problem. You need to learn to remove yourself from the equation and let God do what he does. We are not God. We are his children. He knows what's best for us. You don't know what's best for you, but he does. We have a God who knows the end from the beginning. Don't you think that his promise when he says that he will see it to completion, the good work he began in you, are you calling him a liar now? Are you not trying to be like Abraham who trying to help God out and went and slept with Hagar and birthed Ishmael? Don't do that. You cannot do that. This is why we teach against this stuff, because all we want people to do is to trust Christ, trust God and know that he knows what he's doing. You can rest assured, come and enter his rest. Learn of him and let him do the work in you. Trust me, the work that God is doing, a lot of times we don't even see it, but it's happening. I mean, you could somehow, for, for example, perfect example, you could be, say for example, going to the store, right? And this, there could be a family that have been asking God, you know, if someone can, you know, if God can send someone to, you know, help them, you know, buy groceries. But for some reason, you just happen to walk in the store and you just saw this person and you just had compassion for them and they ask you for, please, can you help me out? And you just put out money and just give them, and they walk in there and go buy grocery. You didn't even think twice about it. You just, it's just something that was you just compelled to do, and you just did it. Not because you want glory or praise, but you just felt compassion for them and just and, and then walked off. Oh, oh, it's okay. God bless you. And, and walk off. 
That could be a prayer that that person had prayed, asking God, and God used you to fulfill his own good work. You didn't do that. It was him that did it through you. You see what I'm saying now? The problem is people want to take credit for what God is doing, and that's not going to work. He is not going to share his glory. No, he won't. Jesus gets all the glory. You better get used to that. Get used to that, okay? I'm sorry that people just can't seem to understand that because they think they have something to offer to God outside of Christ. No, we come to Jesus Christ and we come to God the Father through Jesus Christ. This is why Jesus said <laughs> in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. It's quite simple. You can come to God except through Jesus Christ. So when you stand before him, you stand based on the justification that he has granted you based on what Christ accomplished on your behalf and your faith in him. So when you stand, you stand on the obedience of Christ and the faith of Christ. That is what you stand on before God. This is why we can approach him boldly. You know, in the Old Testament, the children of Israel was afraid when God spoke, you know, in the mountains to Moses. And they were terrified to the point where they said, please, we don't want God talking to us. Let him talk to you and then you come tell us what he wants to say. Whatever he said we'll do, we'll do. We know that didn't pan out too well, you know. But it's the fact that they were afraid to even approach God. But we have something greater, something sure. God himself has revealed himself to humanity through Christ Jesus. That now we can approach him boldly without fear. There is no fear in love. You understand that? We fear God, not trembling fear. That's what the enemies of the cross does. But we fear him because he is God. And he's holy. And he's righteous. And because he's the creator of the world. Okay? And because he's a heavenly father. That's the fear we have of him. That fear is the fear of, that, that, that accompanies love. That's a different kind of fear. Not a trembling fear. Okay? So people, please... Do not allow anyone to steal your crown. Learn to mark and avoid people, y'all. I just had to do this video because I feel like, you know, you know, some people are just getting their butt hurt, you know what I'm saying? Because you're calling out their, their progressive sanctification garbage, okay? And their get to work garbage. Because they don't even understand, because they think they're going to get all these rewards in heaven. Let me tell you something, man. Hold on. Hold on. We're going to go back to Jude, at the end of Jude, and then we're going to be done. Look, oh Lord, hold on. Jude, go back. Look at this. Let's look at the doxology. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, means he's the one holding you the whole time, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. So again, when Jesus comes and appears, he will present you faultless with exceeding joy, okay? To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Guys, it's so simple. To, when you start seeing scriptures come to life through Christ, I'm telling you, you will not even, I mean, you will not entertain any more like nonsense because you will see it. Because if you're standing in the gospel 100% of the time, and I mean, that's what we should do. When someone presents something to you, you have to bring it with the gospel and place it against the gospel. If it goes contrary to the gospel, then it's not of God. Remember that. The enemy is crafty. We have a lot of saved brethren who are being used by the enemy. But they don't even know it. And the more they operate in the flesh, the more the enemy is just, you know, giving them more ammunition. And they think they're doing God's job. They think they're, they're exposing you or us or whoever, you know. But in reality, they are proving and showing exactly who they are and who they operate under without even realizing it. It is truly a sad situation to see such things, you know. The gospel is Christ alone, that's it. Faith alone, grace alone through faith in Christ alone, that's it. There's no, there's no 
backwards message after that. The way we walk, we admonish to walk, you know, in newness of life. That admonishment is to realize who you are in Christ. It has nothing to do with you trying to uh, 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 force yourself to change your behavior. When you're trying to force yourself, you actually place yourself back on the law because you're trying to stop sinning and then you actually will sin more. That's just what happened. I tried it. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. And many of you can attest to that. But when you give it to God and God is the one doing the change, those desires will just fall off like scales, literally, by itself. You won't even have to think much about nothing because you're not, you pretty much is focusing on God and giving everything to him like, Lord, I tried and I failed, so I'm going to give it to you. I should have given it to you the first time. But I did it on my own and I thought I was doing good and suddenly I fell again. But giving it to God, that is who sustains us. You see, when he begins to work in you about certain things, that is something that he can fix. You can fix yourself. If you can fix yourself, why do you need Christ then? Because in other words, those who think that they can fix themselves, it might as well just telling people, go repent of your sins, stop sinning, and then come to Jesus. Just go ahead and say that. Instead of telling people, well, if you don't, you know, you know, you have to show work and this and that. It's the same freaking thing. Frontward and backward speaks the exact same thing. It is all nothing but works. But we know we are not saved by works, people. It is faith. It is grace through faith in Christ alone. I hope this hits home for those who need to hear it. And for those who are still offended, I pray that you will get out of the flesh and start being offended and really just lean to Christ. Take it to Jesus Christ, okay? And I speak this out of love for everyone, even those who hate us, who come against us. Please go to Jesus Christ with this, okay? You cannot speak contrary to Scripture because you are exposing yourself and making yourself look bad. You see, how are we supposed as Christians, the world, I mean, how can you relate to them when you want to be my and Heidi? You know, say all the high and mighty, you know, people walk around like 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 their booboo don't stink. Like, come on, y'all, let's be real, man. Let's be real. Okay. The world look at the fighting and I mean, don't you think that, 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 that there are unsafe people who come to the channels? Everyone that comes to the channels are not safe believers. They're unsafe people. And what do they see? People fighting each other. You know what I'm saying? They, I mean, who wants to be part of that? You know? They can't even get it right. I mean, come on now. God called us to something better. But we must continue to contend for the gospel. That's key. We don't go back and forth with people. We just tell them the truth of what God says. Either you can take it or you won't. And if you don't, then that's on you. I'm not going to go back and forth with you. For what? You know what the Bible says. You just choose not to accept it. Because you want to be right. Then be right. But I tell you who's right though. God is. And his word is not going to change to confirm to your own ideology. That's not realistic. It's not going to happen. Unless you go write your own Bible. <laughs> anyway. Y'all have a blessed day. Please continue to stand on the gospel. Continue to enjoy Christ and continue to focus on him and test every spirit by the word of God, by the gospel. If it's contrary to the gospel, it's not of God, people. Jesus is not going to stop you know, speaking the gospel and to speak something else now. Oh, okay, well, hey, you know, this is new. You know, this is 2022, so I have, I, I have something new. Scripture is not going to change. Okay? God has given us his word. And he says what? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So Jesus stands true as always, and he will continue to expose every lies that come from the enemy. You guys stay vigilant and be alert. All right, guys. God bless you. Love you all. Peace.